hello and welcome everyone so today's topic for our video is something which is very common and very important into optics rather uh, used on a day-to-day -day basis so this is something called as your spherical equivalent and transposition so these two are I would rather say the most important concepts which are to be remembered throughout the life of an optometrist or a person who is into dispensing because they are quite uh, useful into our day-to-day -day practice and uh, not only into refraction but even into dispensing or into anything which you look at while into being optics so let's start with is your spherical equivalent now when we say spherical equivalent that means that there is a spherical lens which is equivalent to something now equivalent is equal so what is the spherical equivalent so it is nothing but a spherical equivalent can be defined as the spherical power whose focal point coincides with the circle of least confusion of a spherocylindrical lens. Now, spherocylindrical lens, if uh, everyone knows, it is also called as a toric lens. So, what is this circle of least confusion? So, if we go through this diagram and if we see uh, in front of us, uh, there is a diagram which says it is a toric lens because there is plus 5 diopter in the vertical meridian and plus 3 diopter into the horizontal meridian. So this is acting as a toric surface because there are two different curvature in both the meridia. So one of the meridia is uh, more steeper and one is a bit flatter. So they both are making two different focal points. So this is one focal point and this one is the other. And uh, that is why uh, we need to find out then equivalent. Like for example, this lens if I convert would be something uh, plus 3 spherical with plus 2 diopter cylinder which is giving me a focal point of here and here these are generally used in patient with mixed refractive errors so this is what is called as the circle of least confusion now what happens at this point the patient gets a bit fair amount of image like for example here the patient can see things a bit more clearer so these are the sharp focal point but here more or less the patient is still quite satisfied so this is what the spherical equivalent is like for example if I don't give the patient plus uh, 3 with a plus 2 cylinder but I think that uh, because of some urgency or something I need to give him an urgent lenses so there can be a spherical equivalent somewhat in between these two number so in these two number if I just simply do is it is an averaging method so how it is done let's see so it is given by spherical equivalent that is equals to a spherical power plus half the cylinder so if you simply see there is 3 and 5 so here uh, let's take example so plus 5 with a plus 2 day after cylinder at 180 degree so what has happened here one meridia is having a plus 5 day after the other meridia is having a plus 7 so if you just add it up that will become a 7 day after so in between them so how I do it as per the formula spherical power plus half the cylinder so that will make plus 5 plus 2 divided by 2 so that is plus 2 with plus 1 that is 6 so in between these two if you found so plus 5 and plus 7 that will be plus 6 day after so when you give this patient these refractive correction uh, if he's 6 6 and if you give him this so it will be comparably nearby this so like for example if it is 6 6 here the patient can still see somewhere around 6 6 parts or like maybe 6 9 or near to 6 6 part because the circle of least confusion is lying right onto the retina for this patient so where is it actually useful many times what happen that let's say that a patient broke his lenses and it is quite urgent for him or quite uh, urgent for him to get it done and he's quite having problem with that so you have ready-made lenses with you which can be used to do it and spherical lenses are quite readily available also while uh, dispensing your contact lenses many times what happens that a particular power is not available like a simple thing if I say uh, a patient is not uh, having that much budget to go for a toric lenses and he's asking for you to go for a cheaper uh, or rather a uh, very feasible uh, contact lenses and you think that a spherical lens can be given but what a number to be given so do I give him a plus 5 or do I give him a plus 7 so it is simple you can do a spherical equivalent and then convert that particular uh, power with the help of a uh, vertex distance conversion and get an approximate uh, power for the contact lenses so it is quite helpful in such cases so let's take one more example that is your plus 7 with minus 3 at 90 degree 
so here the spherical power is plus 7 uh, your cylinder is minus 3 so divide minus 3 by 2 and you will get minus 1.5 and just add these two so 7 minus 1.5 that will give you plus 5.5 diopter and the last example we'll take is minus 3 diopter with minus 3.5 cylinder at 45 degree so what I do is here minus 3 is my spherical 3.5 divided by 2 that will be my cylinder divided by 2 and I'll get this answer that is minus 3 with minus 1.75 and when I just add it up that will minus 4.75 always remember there is an algebraic uh, calculation here so you need to consider the signs of your power as well so let's go on to the next topic which is your uh, transposition now what is transposition now transposition simple it is your changing a same thing into a different form so what we do here in transposition is like uh, for example there is a prescription which is having a positive cylinder and uh, I don't have a positive cylinder with me into my trial case and I want to check how the patient is uh, having the visual equity with that particular lens so what do I do so I can convert any prescription from a plus cylinder form to a minus cylinder form and vice versa okay so now this is these are very much helpful while doing refraction like for example uh, you are not having a plus 1.5 diopter cylinder so what you can do is you can just transpose that and find another another combination of lens which is which is having equivalent uh, what we say power or rather equivalent your refractive so transposition can be two it is simple and toric so what are these two simple transposition is basically as i said uh, transposition of a plus cylinder uh, prescription into a minus cylinder and a vice versa whereas toric transposition is very much important for generating lens power or selecting power for a particular curvature of a lens so what is it we'll go through it so let's start with simple transposition so it implies to the transfer of lens power from one form to another so that the meridian values remain the same now meridian value if you remember into our last PPT power of lenses I showed you how to convert a cross into a prescription form so though both of them were having the same cross form but there were two different form of prescription which were seen okay so if you have not gone through that video please go to it and you'll understand what I'm talking about so for a same cross power you can find out two different prescription one with a plus cylinder and the other with the minus cylinder so it is done in three simple steps which are first of all we'll have a uh, s example simultaneously the first step says the new sphere is the algebraic sum of sphere and cylinder so what does it mean is like for example this is our uh, prescription so the new spherical power will be the addition of these two the algebraic sum so algebraic sum means this is your plus 3 and this is your plus 2 when you add both of them it will become plus 5 okay so the second step says the new cylinder comes with the change of sign of cylinder so what it says the cylindrical power for the new prescription would be the same cylinder with the opposite power so here it is plus 2 cylinder and what I'll get is minus 2 cylinder because I just changed the sign of the cylinder and finally what will be the axis so if it is your less than 90 add 90 to it and if it is more than 90 subtract 90 by it so simply we are changing the axis by 90 degree we are making it perpendicular so in this example we have the axis as 160 degree which is more than 90 so what I'll do is I'll reduce 90 degree from it which is 160 minus 90 which gives me 70 degree so what will be my new prescription it will be plus 5 diopter spherical with minus 2 diopter of cylinder with an axis of 70 degree so this is how you do a transposition so if you ask me this and this will give same amount of vision to the patient if the prescription of uh, one of them is given so even it can be done with a plus cylinder form or either it can be done with a minus cylinder form generally we, what we do is we prescribe in minus cylinder form that is because it is easy for the manufacturer to do okay so next example we take uh, this is a minus 4.5 diopter spherical with a plus 1 diopter cylinder at 60 degree so as the steps were the first is you add minus 4.5 plus 1 so that will make you minus 3.5 this is algebraic sum so minus plus makes minus and you reduce 1 from this so next is your say, step 2 which is change the sign of cylinder so it was plus 1 which will become minus 1 diopter of cylinder and finally there will be axis which is 150 degree how 150 degree came this is less than uh, 90 degree so what I did 60 plus 90 
okay less than 90 degree so you add 90 more than 90 degree you subtract 90 so here it is less than 90 so I added 90 to it and it will become 150 so now my new prescription is minus 3.5 minus 1 at 150 degree let's take one more example which is plus 6 diopter with uh, minus 2.5 at 10 degree so as the step 1 says add both of them algebraically so plus 6 minus 2.5 that will give you a value of plus 3.5 so the new cylinder would be plus 2.5 how it came it was a minus 2.5 diopter cylinder so I change the sign and make it plus 2.5 diopter cylinder and finally the axis so it was less than 90 so I added 90 degree to it so it is 10 plus 90 that is 100 so the new prescription is plus 3.5 plus 2.5 at 100 degree coming on to the next part which is your toric transposition now this is a very important part which many people uh, find out that what is the need of it for us to understand this is some simply gives you an understanding that a particular lens which is in front of you or rather into your hand and if it is a toric lens what are the surface power or the curvature power which are into it like for example I just cannot say that uh, plus 6 was given into front side and minus 2 cylinder was on back that doesn't define what the power profile of a lens is so this is actually a toric formula is written in a fraction form now fraction form when I say it is basically numerator and denominator so they comprise of the base curve the cylinder curve and its combination basically what combination can give you a particular prescription so that can be done with n number of combination uh, your combinations given the amount of your uh, base curve or rather the sphere curve which is already present to the lens so it is simply given by this formula that the numerator is your sphere curve that is the spherical power generated on one surface divided by your denominator will have your base curve into opposite axis so what is the base curve I'll tell you in the next slide and the cylinder curve with the same axis so these two I'll be excla explaining in the upcoming slide so let's see the example so this is your lens which we are going to make so this has a front uh, surface and a back surface so I'll depict it with two surface so this is the lens with the front surface and this is your back surface so if you see the front surface I have written as sphere curve why sphere curve so this complete your complete uh, surface will be given a single power whereas the back surface I have divided in two meridia again one meridia I have written base curve the other meridia I have written the cylinder curve now this will depend on the axis of the lens which I am generating so that this could be here or this could be here or vice versa depending on what axis we are making so this is why it is required for example this is the lens which is kept in my hand so I need to understand what is the sphere curve of this what is the base curve of this and what is the cylinder curve for this particular lens so this is where the transposition of toric transposition comes into play so this is the same thing as I explained so what are the steps of toric transposition so again here there are few steps which are in, uh, involved in it so the first step says transpose the prescription if the sign of cylinder and base curve are different so there will be a particular prescription given and there will be a base curve which is given to you so if the sign of the cylinder given in the prescription like for example it is minus and the sign of cylinder which is given uh, the sign of base curve which is given to you is plus so you need to change the uh, prescription by the help of transposition we all know a minus cylinder can be converted into a plus cylinder form with the help of transposition that is done because to match up the particular cylindrical profile uh, with your uh, particular blank now what is a base curve that simply means uh, lenses come with a blank blank in the sense they are pre-curved they are not straight cut pieces they by default come with a curvature and that curvature is actually uh, defined in the term of base curve the basic curve which is already present into the lens so that power is depicted with the help of your diopter so that could be minus 4 minus 6 plus 4 plus 6 and so on so these are all your base curves so first step is you need to transpose if the uh, power or rather the sign of your uh, base curve and cylinder are not same so let's take one example here there is a prescription plus 6 diopter with plus 2 diopter cylinder at 90 degree and here the base curve is given plus 4 so here the first step doesn't imply because already the base curve and your uh, cylinder are having the same sign so let's go on to the second step it says the base curve will be perpendicular to the axis of the prescription so the base curve will be placed at the perpendicular axis so what is the axis right now it is 90 degree 
the perpendicular of 90 is just add 90 to it so that is 90 plus 90 becomes 180 so the base curve will be placed at plus 4 diopter cylinder at 180 degree so this is the first step we got one value second is cross curve or rather the cylinder curve is given by base curve plus the cylinder power so you'll add these two and the axis will be same as that of prescription okay already one axis we got so the other axis will be given by cross curve that is you add base curve with the cylinder curve so that is plus 4 plus 2 that becomes 4 and 2 is 6 and the axis will be 90 same as that of the prescription finally there is one curve which is left that is your sphere curve which is given by the formula spherical power minus the base curve so here the spherical power is plus 6 diopter and what is the base curve that is 4 so simple here algebra will be coming plus 6 minus bracket plus 4 so plus minus becomes minus so it will be minus 4 plus 6 and minus 4 that will become plus 2 diopter of spherical so we got all uh, we got all the values so that is your base curve is here with an axis cross curve is here with an axis and a sphere curve is there with an axis so how we write the particular formula so this is how you write it so this is your plus 2 diopter spherical that is your sphere curve 4 at 180 that is your base curve and plus 6 at 90 that is your cross curve so simple if you just add it up that will give you your what we say particular um, result that is plus 6 day after plus 4 plus 2 it is plus 6 and uh, the difference between these two would be your um, 4 and 6 that is 2 day after of cylinder so it is a way to just uh, co verify it so when you plot this onto your what we say with a cross you'll find out that it gives the same prescription okay next thing is again take one more example that is for a prescription of minus 4.75 uh, minus 2 diopter cylinder 140 and the base curve again here the base curve and the cylinder are same so we find out the same thing so base curve is minus 4 so what is perpendicular of 140 it is 140 minus 90 that will be 50 degrees cross curve is given by base curve plus the cylinder that is minus 4 and minus 2 becoming 6 at 140 uh, sphere curve is your minus 4.75 minus minus 4 so now because of the algebraic equation here minus minus will become plus so this is minus 4.75 and plus 4 giving you minus 0 0.75 diopter and the toric transposition would be spherical curve divided by your base curve with cross curve okay taking one more example here now this is one where the rule one will come here the base curve and your uh, cylinder they don't have the same sign so what you'll do here is that you will be first transposing this equation into a plus cylinder form so how we do the transposition it's simple so you convert it and you will get that plus 3.75 diopter plus 2 diopter cylinder at 180 now remember the moment you transpose the equation you need to only take this equation for all the calculation please never take this axis or this cylinder for the calculation that completely messes up with your solution many people have this problem and they again take this one for that particular equation now this is your new equation and this is your base curve forget about this one okay so now the base curve is plus 3 at 90 why 180 is the new axis so perpendicular to it will be 90 cross curve is given by plus 3 and plus 2 that will become plus 5 at 180 and sphere curve is given by plus 3.75 minus plus 3 so that will be again 0 0.75 and how we'll write the toric transposition is this way so that is 0 0.75 plus 3 at 90 plus 5 at 180 so this is all about your uh, toric transposition simple transposition and spherical equivalent please solve some equation by your own and rather you can find some questions or problems online also and uh, see if any doubts are coming and please report it onto the comment box and I'll try to help you with that uh, so thank you for your patient listening onto this video I hope this will be useful for you in your future and in your practice and to understand the optics more better way we'll be shortly back with you with more new videos on uh, further uh, topics of optics so thank you and keep following us thank you and goodbye